What's up, peeps? It's your girl, VP, and today we're reading New Rules. I'm sorry it's kind of, um, not been posting a while, because, uh, I haven't been able to post in a while. Yeah. So, let's get started. Logan woke up at precisely 7 a.m. and immediately moved into the kitchen to fix himself some breakfast. This time, it was toast with a side of yogurt and fruit. It was healthy and minimal, as he f- still felt sick after last night's dinner. He sat at the table, conjuring a Soku book and pen. Today was recording day, so he needed his brain functioning. Even though he put together the video plan, he wasn't sure what the actual video would entail. Going on a Roman's comment, it would be focused on something different character style. But that could mean anything. So he worked through Soku's, eating his breakfast slowly. By the time Roman waltzed in, complaining about it being early, Logan had been there for an hour and a half. The video prep was scheduled to begin in another hour, so Logan nodded and headed at his fellow side and closed the Soku book. Good morning, Roman. How did you sleep? Roman stiffed as he pulled out a carton of milk. My sleep was wonderful. I mean, I am still recovering from Dallin's present appearance so i slept deeply and then i was made to get up at such an untimely hour too how the heavens hate me logan didn't even go there he chatted to his eccentric over-the-top dramatic fellow side until padded and anxiety walked in murmuring quietly to themselves logan immediately tensed roman raised a perfectly shaped eyebrow at him before turning to welcome the other two. Logan didn't even try to meet Virgil's eyes. Excuse me, excuse me, he said quietly. I have to go perform some final checks for today's video. He stood up, cleaning up after himself with a wave of a hand. Payne gave him a sad look as he moved aside, but Virgil didn't even flinch as Logan brushed past him. You know? The anxious side said once Logan had started down the hallway. I always thought you were a dick. Not a complete robot. Guess I was wrong. Logan froze. Because logically, he knew those words had come from a place of hurt. they come from a place where there had been fear and pain festering. And he knew that Virgil had just trying to let out his pain in a way that would cause others to feel the same way. But, robot? It was a, that word again. The one little word that settled on him like a brand. Like a name tag. Robot. I'm sorry? He made himself say, forced himself to turn around. Virgil, at least, looked uncomfortable. You've always hated me, and you proved that when Derek came. But I always thought maybe you had a heart there somewhere. His gaze sharpened on Logan's left felt his gaze sharpened and Logan felt the stare like a razor to his skin. But you don't. You're nothing but a cold, calculating feeling. You are a robot, Logan. And Logan stood there. He could not understand everything perfectly. It just didn't make it hurt any less. He adjusted his glasses. I see. He said finally, and Virgil shook his head. Thank you for the feedback. I shall take it to consideration. (laughs) Machine. Virgil spat, and Logan just smiled politely and started walking again, hoping that nobody could see his internal tears. Irrational tears. He wept in a way, though, when he got to his room, because feelings were too icky for him to deal with. So he pushed it all down, 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 until his beard so far underneath everything, he thought he might actually be able to survive like that. He could still hear the words, though. could almost see them on his face when he glanced in the mirror. Machine. Robot. Chapter 5. They didn't make the video.
Instead, Thomas visited friends and family. It was both a relief and a curse for Logan as his schedule was discarded. He felt it in his chest as if someone had struck him his heart directly, which was ridiculous because there was in, that was impossible. He still found himself rubbing the area absently as he sat and worked through some logical puzzles. It took mere hours before the number swam before his eyes, and he threw his pencil down on the desk. Stupid, he muttered to himself, pressing the heel of his palms to his eyes. Stupid. Well, that's not a good name to call yourself, Patton said, and while his voice was attempt at cheerfulness, Kogan could tell his fellow side really wasn't that happy right now. Of course, mortality hated conflict. Look inside. <sighs> it's merely an observation, Patton. No need to worry. Patton's eyes were sad. I heard Virgil earlier, he said quietly. I am sure we all heard Virgil. He shouldn't have said those things. Logan managed a bitter smile, refusing to maintain eye contact. He had every right, he said firmly. I aided in his struggles with Derek. I made him feel. He shudders in the imp implication. I made him feel like an outcast and a disorder. And for that, I can never apologize enough. Patton sat on Logan's bed, looking solemn and sad and tired. The fighting between them has borne him down. None of this should have, should have happened. I am the one to blame, Logan said calmly, ignoring Patton's protest. It's a matter of facts and logic. I was overly harsh to Virgil. I threatened him. I cast him aside more so than you and Roman. I am the unforgivable one. I am the... Machine... He spat the last word vindicately. Logan, you're not... I'm tired, Patton, Logan said, and his shoulders slumped. Thank you for your visit. Please relay my sincerest apologies and sympathies to Virgil. <coughs> <coughs> Lo, Patton. Logan was done. He was exhausted. Please. And maybe it was the shock of that alone, or maybe it was the weight in his voice, or maybe it was something else entirely, but Patton bowed his head and disappeared with a soft pop. For a second, there was the faintest smell of oranges. Logan stared at his half-finished Oku page and let a very long breath. Knowledge truly was a curse, a burden. If you have any dreams or wish lists to fill... Roman's voice rung in his head, and Logan scrawled at himself. No, dreams were useless in his position. He was made of pure, cold logic. He was fact, not fiction. He had goals, ambitions, but he was not a dreamer. He knew, he knew relatively better than anyone, but to have a dream? Logan shook his head and stared at his Soku once more. He woke up with his head on his desk. There was a crick in his neck, and when he looked down at his hands, they were metallic claws. Robot. He went back to sleep with a hollow heart. When he woke up fully, he was in bed, which was not where he had fallen asleep. His glasses were folded neatly on the bed beside him, and his tie was loosened so it wouldn't strangle him during the night. There was the slightest trace of oranges. Patton, he thought. And indeed, there was a tray at the end of the bed, toast smothered in crofter's jam, and a tall glass of apple juice. Good food. Patton knew he enjoyed crofter's. There was a note on the tray, and Logan soared at a moment to read it. Roman says you need to find a dream for yourself. Virgil says he's sorry. Patton. Logan just took the note away and ate in silence because dreams were for children, and forgiveness was for those who were worthy of it. He was neither. He was just a robot. Chapter 6 Over the next few days, Logan fell into a new schedule. He woke up at exactly 7.15, spent 15 minutes completely so completely so, cruise, so that his brain was warming up. 
than he had breakfast, avoiding the others by simply taking the food back to his room. Then he researched and planned and did whatever was required until 1.15 p.m. He then ate lunch, again in his room, and spent the afternoons doing puzzles. Much of his energy was going directly into Thomas's brain functions and everyday thinking. Since the video had been postponed, a fact a few of the fans were happy about, he found that his workload had slowed slightly, and he was free to focus more on Thomas rather than rather than Thomas's actions. So he spent most of his free time before lunch in the control room, watching through Thomas's eyes as the man went about his day. Thomas's stresses were normal, and now that anxiety had toned it down and Roman had found balance, it seemed that his host was going to be okay. So why did Logan have such a bad feeling? Perhaps it was because of the tension between him and his fellow sides. Perhaps it was because he was too cold, too logical. Maybe he was the one who needed to tone it down. He shivered slightly and turned away. He was logic. He shouldn't be bothered by such unruly moments of emotional self-consciousness. He was just a robot, a living calculator and dictionary and whatever else the others deemed him. He wasn't anything more than that. So, so why was he being flooded with such icky thoughts? <coughs> <coughs> I thought I'd find you here. Roman's voice is loud, and Logan winces at the sudden instruction. Patty wants you in the kitchen. Will Virgil be there? He couldn't stop the question from tumbling out of his mouth. And from Prince's grim look, it seemed the royal had anticipated the question. There was no bravo in Roman's voice when he said quietly, Patty wants you two to make up. He's rather distressed by the fighting and your current mindset. Logan growled. There's nothing wrong with my current mindset. He turned back to the monitors and suddenly refused to look at Rowan. Please send my apologies for not going. I do not wish to worsen in- <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. My third sore. I do not wish to worsen Virgil's emotional state. I will continue to watch Thomas. I will be out for lunch if Patton wishes to speak to me. Roman heaved a big sigh. And suddenly there was a hand gripping Logan's arm. It wasn't a question. There wasn't more than one option. And then they disappeared with a soft pop, and Logan is forced to confront his greatest regret. Patton came into focus as soon as Logan could dis distinguish the slightest smatters of freckles on Mortality's face. He wrinkled his arm away from Roman. I did not give consent, he snapped, but Roman just shrugged it off and pulled out his phone. Please. Patton said, and his voice was trembling just slightly. You have to talk to him. You guys can't keep fighting and avoiding each other like this. I'm totally open for a really good explanation, Logan, Virgil said from the table. Logan took a second to analyze his fellow side, from the false boredom in his voice to the hunch in his shoulders he tried to buried himself in his hoodie. Logan didn't want confirmation. Virgil hated confirmation. This was all Patton. He took a deep breath and ten tentatively sat before Virgil. I am sorry, he said awkwardly, feeling strangely fidgety. I was too harsh on you during your doubt with depression. Derek, Virgil snapped. Derek. Logan amended, his glance over to Patton, who nodded encouragingly. It was an unstable time for all of us, and I projected my frustrations onto you and your own issues. I sincerely apologize. It sounded formal enough, and converted most of what Logan felt he should apologize for. Apologies were not his forte. An apology like this required more than he could give. Virgil scoffed and drew his shoulders back. His eyes were dark with angry, cruel amusement, and Logan braced himself for impact because when anxiety went off, the effects were felt all over Thomas's mind and body. Most likely, his outburst by the youngest side would confide Thomas to his bed tomorrow, simply because of mental stress. You are unbelievable, Virgil fumed, 
and from behind Logan, Patty made a small sound of dismay. You really don't know anything about emotions, do you? To you, it's all, all trends and patterns, and and you can't even never really connect with another emotional beings because you don't have emotions. And then came the words Logan had been waiting for all along. You are such a machine. Before we continue, I'm going to get a sip of water. We. Chapter 7. Nothing he did now would change anything, and that was just pure fact. Virgil's cheeks were red, and his chest heaved, anger and frustration and hurt seeping from him. There were tears forming in his eyes, tears for himself and his suffering. There weren't any tears for Logan, tears of regret from the words he was spitting like bullets. There were selfish tears, rational tears, and Logan could understand, and he could forgive. What he could not forgive was himself. He couldn't forgive the sudden tightness in his chest as that quiet hollowness he'd been harboring snapped, disappeared, got drowned out by high-pitched kneeing. He wondered if the others could hear the shrieking. He couldn't forgive himself the shorter breaths, the shallow inhaling. He couldn't get any air anymore, and his throat was burning, burning, burning. He was being irrational. Pettin, who had remained uninvolved until now, stepped forward, but Logan held a hand up and mortality stopped. Logan leaned forward. Keep going, he said quietly, not because he wanted to hear it, but because Virgil needed to say it. You don't feel. Virgil's voice was broken. It was frayed and shattered, and as Virgil sank back into his seat, Logan wondered if the younger side was frayed and shattered and broken too. You don't know what it's like to have emotions, to love, to regret, to be in emotional pain. You're a robot. What else? Virgil sucked in a breath. You don't have a dream, he said, and Logan stiffened, because that was an unfamiliar territory. The robot ac accusations he couldn't navigate, but this... You have ambitions, and ambitions are cold... You just do things to get things done. You don't do things for enjoyment because you don't see the point. You sit there and you act so high and mighty like you're not in some kind of freak. You aren't bothered with a complete lack of emotional understanding. And you're just so mean. Like I heard the un undercurrent in Riddle's words understood what was being said. This wasn't all for him. This was for Virgil, too. These were words of self-loathing, and he had been festering and infecting him. If this was the way of cleansing, it was okay. Then again, Logan knew that Virgil meant a lot of it for the logical side as well. That's saying a little bit, too. I do so, too, Logan said, chest aching, voice trembling, heartbreaking. It was so emotional of him but emotions were what virgil needed right now so logan thought maybe it was time he showed some i don't do them because i have to i do them because i want to because i understand them they're logical they follow patterns i can understand them i know what to do i'm good at sokus and so i do them often virgil breasts are wobbly now i like Crofters, Logan continued quietly. I try not to eat it all the time because I like parting my fruit out so it's healthy. I like doing that because I understand it. I can calculate. But I eat crofters, and I like it, and I don't have to like it. Logan, I, I'm a robot, yes, and I'm sorry. I act like nothing more than a machine, and I am sorry. I don't understand things the way you do. The way Pat and Roman and Thomas do. I don't get doubt or depression because I rationalize it. I can break it down. But there are things, Virgil, 
Things I don't understand. I'm not all-knowing, despite how much I wish I was. I hate being wrong. I hate admitting I don't know things. But that's because that's all I'm good at. I'm the one who knows what to do, what the facts are, what the rules are. I'm the one who runs the numbers and makes the plans, because that's who I am. Logan stood up, and his hands were shaking. Virgil blinked up at him, guilt coloring his cheeks, inside his hue of pink. I'm sorry. I think, Logan said, cutting off the apology he didn't want. I think that my dream is to be a, a real boy. Then he straightened his glasses, nodded at it, and walked away. He was no good at conflicts and emotional conversations. He and Virgil had made up like Patton had wanted, but Logan had displayed something, a part of himself, that he had buried in the shadows for too long. And maybe that was the first step. Chapter 8 The apology that came easily after the apology Apology Logan gave to Patton, who followed him in silence back to his room. I know that wasn't the outcome you were hoping for, Logan said, keeping his back to the fellow's side in fear of appearing vulnerable. For that, I am sorry. It is hard to face my mistakes, and though I deeply regret my words to Virgil, I find it hard to apologize for. Logan, I'm not angry. Something settled in Logan's chest, because yes, he had indeed assumed that Patton would be angry. Logan always seemed to make everyone angry. Hold on, who's saying this part? Okay, I think this is Logan saying it. Virgil has been repressed and shunned for too long, and I made the entire situation worse with my emotional outbursts during his time of depression. Patton took a very deep breath and let down that well of happiness. He was mortality. He was more than positivity. Logan, he said, today, today was the right thing to do. Apologizing without meaning it is worse than not apologizing at all. I understand the tensions in Thomas's mixed emotion cause you to be irrationally angry at Virgil. But you've balanced yourself out again now. You've got control again. And Logan hated that he had admitted everything to Patton in a moment of weakness. He hated that he let the information go. He had told Patton of the loss of control he'd felt once Virgil, Virgil's rampant feelings had throbbed Thomas of the cool logic he usually had. Logan had been left to try and cope with the sudden rush of uncensored emotions, illogical and confusing. It had been what led to the unplanned outburst of Virgil. I will never be a friend to them, Logan said without feeling. His hand flexed. I will never be a friend to you. I do not believe the emotional range to be friends with you. Penn guessed quietly, and Logan closed his eyes tightly, as if it would ease the horrible words. But he needed to say this, he needed to venture so far past honesty. He needed to wipe the slate clean and then rebuild his image as someone who couldn't be vulnerable again. You're a friend to me already, Pan said quietly, and Logan couldn't keep cool. His emotions, like them or not, were running high, and he was going to break, 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 and pat him. Logan put down his glasses, and he took off his tie because only serious people wear neckties, and started crying. He only cried harder when he heard a whisper, and he smelled the sweet scent of oranges. The night he dreamed, and it made no sense to him, snippets of clouds and colors, red and cold and sharp, and he woke up. Again, he was alone, but he had been covered with a blanket, and his tie and glasses were left neatly on the desk. This time, there was no note, no breakfast. No warmth to his morning as he got up, got dressed, and stood in the middle of his room, and felt the urge to scream in frustration. His emotions were getting the better of him right now, and he needed to calm down before he lost a sense of who he was. He was logic. He was reason. He was the fact, not fiction. He was real. 
he was in a dream and and he was such a horrible person no no he was fine he was being the person he needed to be to keep Thomas in balance. He couldn't just cave every time Virgil got upset or pat and use puppy eyes. Logan needed to have a backbone, just so that the others were free to do what they wished with their emotions. He needed to be emotionless so that they could be emotional. Nobody came for him that day. Logan didn't leave his room. Okay, um, chapter 9, we're starting, um, L-N-T-A-O, Learning New Things About Ourselves, the puppet episode, if you guys didn't know that, yay. They did the video, finally, and Logan can help but feel like an outcast. He felt as though he were a mile away, across the ravine, trying to shout his thoughts in the middle of a thunderstorm. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be heard, and nobody could care to listen. And, of course, the whole video was centered around feeling off, because that was Logan's entire reason for existing, apparently. Feelings. Ew. He humored them for a while, trying to keep his voice droll and his own personal feelings out of it. He argued with Roman, because despite what people claimed, Roman was consistently wrong, all the time, without expectation, because he was a fool with his head in the clouds, who still believed in dreams. Logan was content to argue, because just maybe his point would get across. And then Virgil intervened. Okay, listen up, you two, because I'm getting real tired of this. Roman, the name mentioned, sighed, stopped arguing. You get super insecure for some reason when he, that happens. The work suffers. Roman scoffed. What at and Logan. Virgil's voice went just slightly quieter, an almost unnoticeable tremor buried there. A quick look the time was provided that their host hadn't heard a strange tremor, or if he had, he hadn't identified it as something to be concerned about. You get upset any time anyone throws a wrench in the system, or really any time things aren't working perfectly, so you start acting like a jerk and making everyone feel stupid. I'm not insecure, Roman shouted before Logan could really comprehend the response to Virgil's outburst. Really, now was not the time or the place for such a meaningful conversation, even though Patton's face was all lay with hope and slight nervousness at this such valent inv invitation to talk, Logan opened his eyes. No, Logan opened his mouth, because despite popular opinion, he really didn't like being the bad guy. But instead, he said, Well, someone had to bring you guys all on the line. Virgil's face shut off completely, and Logan curled his hands into fists as the world's unfeeling robot circled in his head. Uh, bring me into line, Roman said. And for once, Logan was grateful that the royal acted like such an airhead for the camera. I'm the one who ensures the order is maintained, he insisted, falling back into his easy arguing, just to keep his mind off of how upset Virgil had looked, how crushed and hopeless his heart had been when Logan had lost control all that time ago. Without me, you'd have nothing to maintain in the first place. Then they both shouted at once, I'm the most important side here. And if only he believed his own words. It was too easy to fall into that character he had expected to be. He was never logic for any of the Sander Size videos, merely Logan. They were all reduced to a show, so that is, so that it would never go deeper than Thomas's issues, because who would want that? Nobody looked at sadness and a tangle of problems were turning themselves up. That wasn't how the world worked. He played the fool and... For Logan's idiom, he messed with the Rubik's Cube, Pat and tossed him. He spewed facts and sounded smart, and he pretended he was satisfied because it was his job to keep his host functional and mostly happy. His problems were in danger. His problems would endanger that, and so he could not bring himself to voice them. But then they started f 
fiddling with character style. Why on this green earth? Her Logan suggested changing character style. And why did changing character style mean changing into dopey looking puppets? They looked ridiculous. Patton as a paper bag, Remo was with a ridiculous chin, and Virgil as admittedly a cute puppet. Being cute did not make him look any less ridiculous. Logan would stand by his statement until Thomas died. Logan, gear up! If by up you mean that I'm not down to do this, you are correct, he said dryly, hiding his discomfort at the idea. It just didn't make sense. Oh, Logan, come on, Pat and whined. We need you at the table if we're gonna be learning. He really did not want to be here anymore. Please, it has come quite clear to me that co-signing with all your ridiculous antics is just a formality. When you all decided on using puppets to address a serious issue, logic was already figuratively thrown out the window. Roman sighed. Again, you don't need to use the word figuratively, figuratively when we know that you are literally thrown out a window. You won't be saying that if you just look to the Dealing with Intrusive Thoughts video, Roman. I'm kidding. No. <coughs> <coughs> How do you know? Logan struck back. Have you been watching me constantly? Don't assume, Roman, Patton scolded. You know what happens when you assume. You make an as out of Sue and me. Logan really wanted to smack his head on something repeatedly, preferably until death. Thank you, Patton. I just don't want to concern anybody by suggesting I was thrown out a window. I wanted to com communicate five by five that I'm... Five by five. It's okay, Roman, Thomas added. His intentions are there. I mean, what does going out above and beyond with clarity hurt? Going above and beyond, Roman repeated mockingly, laughing a little. <laughs> Logan curled his fist tightly. More like going overboard. It's stupid. Stupid? Oh, he was going to show the royal trash can. Stupid. He threw a screwed up paper as hard as he could, feeling idly satisfied with himself as Roman let out a pained yelp. His satisfaction promptly drained away, though. He was evaluated his current emotional levels and came to the conclusion that raising, rising anger and lashing out often leads to things like abusive behavior or reclusive and isolating behavior, which could exhibit, or several things would be severely impacted. I'm. I'm sorry. He apologized with a quick, meaningful glass of Virgil. I don't know what that was. Maybe I should go. No! Patton snapped. We are not about to leave this here, mister. There's something heavy in his words. We can't continue this convo. If you're gone, so. And then somehow, they were talking about Sesame Street. Honestly, Logan didn't know how anybody could follow these videos. The conversations were so scattered all the time. So they talked about feelings, which nobody was pleased with, and the fact that the main topic of the discussion somehow made it worse. And about loops. They spoke about several times, and Logan was going to turn into a fruit loop himself if they kept going. And Thomas was increasingly self-depresticating. Logan could identify with that. And finally, he could offer input without being laughed at, or mocked, or ignored. He could make headway in the conversation, could start helping Thomas like they were supposed to be doing. Yeah, Logan, help us out, Patton said enthusiastically. What can you tell us about learning new things about ourselves? He took a deep breath. Well, I guess it goes back to the point that you made earlier, Patton. Asking the right question. Why? That's right, Roman said. Today's video was brought to you by the letter Y. No, stop it. Stop. The question why. W-H-Y. Why? So much of what you feel, Thomas, comes to down whether or not your actions are aligning with your goals. Oh, Patton gasped. I think I get it. Logan just blinked because. What? Yeah, mortality turned to Thomas. Why do you make videos? Because they're fun, Thomas answered. Why did you make it a job? So I could support myself. 
and so I could try bigger things. Why did your old friend's question stick with you? Because, 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 because. Thomas trailed off before it, admitting. Because I always wonder if I'm doing the right thing for a living. Okay, interesting, Logan said loudly, trying to regain control of the situation. Elaborate on that, and nobody do any puppet bits. Of course, I met Pat and had to do a puppet bit. Well, that was from the electric company. Shh! Logan has sharply waving a hand. Thomas? Once again, I'm going to get some water because I'm going to finish the book and no one's going to stop me. Well, no one, but maybe my sore throat will stop me. I mean, how many chapters are there? Because I think we're at the end. Fourteen. I could probably stop at the end of this chapter. Let me get a sip first. Okay. No, it's okay. I don't care if it's short. That's actually appreciated. Chapter 10. Shh! Logan sharped his, his sharply waving hand. Thomas? Thomas has bit his lip uncertainly before dropping his hands to his side. I don't know, he said, sounding a little lost and uncertain. I guess, you know, as far as I know, we get one life, and... I guess I have doubts about whether or not I'm making the most of mine. Sometimes Logan couldn't understand irrational human fears. This time, though, was a modern issue like this. He fully endorsed Thomas's insecurities, though he wished that his host would learn to trust himself. Okay, he said slightly gentler now. We're getting somewhere. Expand upon these doubts. Logan shuffled. Oh, man, um... I... I don't even know where to go from there. Fair enough, Logan thought. It was hard to tear apart your own career to evaluate whether or not you're wasting your time doing something stupidly tedious with no lasting rewards. I mean, he said already complaining a horde facts and examples to Thomas to help Thomas on his way. If you asked me, I could certainly list off several factors that very well could be contributing to your doubts. If you asked me, I'd gladly share them. Nobody immediately jumped to his offer. Everyone simply murmured uncomfortably. Logan was undeterred. Just let me know if you want to hear what I have to say. Hey, Logan, Virgil said enthusiastically. Can you list off some of those factors you mentioned? I'm glad you asked, Virgil, Logan chirped. Firstly, there's no security. Job security. I mean, people fall out of public favor very quickly. Virgil then did a me a dim Admittedly, it was pretty accurate and high, assuming rendition of Sesame Street's count. One. One cause of unease. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, lightning. Pew, 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 pew. You're balancing a great deal of responsibilities. People have limits. Perhaps you can't continue at this pace indefinitely. Two. Two nervous thoughts. Ah, ah, ah. Pew, 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 pew. Your work is inessential. Some may claim that they've been inspired by one thing you said over another, but who's to say they couldn't have found the inspiration they needed elsewhere? Three. Three depressing s speculations. Ah, ah, ah. And maybe it was insensitive, but Logan was on a roll now. Nobody had listened to him before. He, and he'd known since the beginning that YouTube was not a solid job that Thomas could maintain forever. Frankly, the logical trait was amazed that everything had lasted this long. And, oh, oh, he said, I can think of another one. Nobody takes you seriously. Pan gasped rather theoretically. <gasps> Four, Virgil said, a voice only slightly shaky. Four uncomfortable characters in this room right now. 
Logan knew it was harsh, but he felt no guilt, even as he shared a quick look with Patton. Logan had said before, push them away to do what's right for them. Friendship was a roadblock sometimes when tough decisions had to be made. Logan knew that, and Logan believed that he could distance himself enough not to be swayed by sentiment. Thomas betrayed betrayed Aya seemed to burn right through to his heart, though, and Logan wondered if he grossly underestimated his own willpower. Logan? Thomas said quietly. Is that really what you think? Logan steeled his nerve. Thomas, I have held my opinions back. Thomas, I've held my opinions for too long, and that's obviously not benefiting you. I refuse to withhold the perspective any longer. You need to get a real job. Hey, yeah, Roman said immediately. Logan wished him to set himself on fire and die. Like being a movie star. No, Logan said, waist very slightly. A real job. Virgil hummed, frowning at Logan as he though the logical side had just declared that my chemical romance was nothing but a bunch of losers wailing like dying cats. Sheesh, Virgil said. You saw bleed some jam, accidentally make a few puns, and now you're all sensitive about not being taken seriously? I am not a joke, Logan almost shouted, and then mentally cursed. Damn, too jumpy. Too open. It was such an instructional reaction, especially since he was the only side who wasn't a goddamn puppet. I mean, I can't be thought of as such, because there will be times in which I must be heated, and given our um current circumstances, I clearly haven't been. So I'm just saying what must be said. I can tolerate this foolishness any longer, to Thomas he said. You need to change your life around. There was a beat of silence, and Logan used that pause to try to reel in his messy, complicated reactions. He wouldn't call them feelings, because he was seriously just trying to do the right by Thomas, but they were close. Logan, Riddle started, I appreciate what you bring to the table and all, but the thing you just recommended would be a massive change in Thomas's life, so I'm going to hate you a little bit right now and uh, shut your dirty mouth. Logan wish that didn't ache as much as it did. Typical. Just because his way of looking after his host was have to be the unpopular opinion. I don't know, Verge. Maybe he's right. Logan sounded so hesitant and heartbroken that Logan had almost apologized right then and there. He cut himself last minute and raised his chin minutely. Thomas needed to hear this, just as much as Logan needed to say it. Maybe that's the cause of all of this. Okay, guys, it's really early in the morning. I must see if I could go to bed. Who knows if I can or can't? So, take it easy, because everyone needs a break, and do your best.